Mina, konnichiwa. As usual, karibuni sana to teens on the bench. Mkano. And I am your ever-loving, ever-gorgeous, your darling <laughs> teens coordinator, Caroline Kadhombe. Mm -hmm. And uh, with me on the bench, and sort of outside of the bench, <laughs> <laughs> but soon we to have, be on the bench. as usual, we have our beloved, our awesome, yeah. the one who cannot differentiate between yay and jay. Mwenyewe. Our beloved Reverend, Reverend Dennis, karibu sana. Asante, And to asante. my left is the gorgeous, yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. single, I hope. Yes. Yeah, for the yes. sake of the gentleman, talk yes. to me nicely. <laughs> We have our lovely teen joining us on the bench today. Please say your name. Um, yes, my name is Annette Nasimiu. I worship at All Saints Cathedral. Yeah. A praise and worship her. Mm. Yes, I'm in praise and worship team. Uh -huh. yes. Ashari? Not really. Oh, not really. Yeah, not really. Yeah. 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 Young men, young men of Jesus who go in Imasho. Mm. Anyway, and to my right, my paper is falling. We have our like kusema preacher of the day. Lakini muna muna mesmama pale kwenye madhaba hu. And he will introduce himself. But before we do that, allow us to start off with a word of prayer. Tuombe. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again on a lovely Sunday on Teens on the Bench where you have given us a platform to reach out to the entire world. And so may the message that you have placed in our hearts resonate with all who get to listen to it. May the conversations we have on this bench make sense to the people and yet still bring glory to you. For it is in Jesus' name we ask all this. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Tunafaa kujibu kanichi. Oh, munajibu the same way. Konichiwa. 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 Oh, oh. Is it konichiwa or konichiwa? Konichiwa. 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 Mm. Very well. Konichiwa, brother. Konichiwa. <laughs> Na kuna praise God in Chinese. What do you say praise God in Chinese? First of all, that's Japanese. Second, sijui. There's a difference. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Please proceed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Ivan Benjamin, and today's topic on Teens on the Bench is the Kingdom of God having no end. Yes. So to start us off, I'll be reading this for you, and this is what I had. God is so unlimited in power that time and space cannot bind him or define him. He created the universe that has no beginning and no end. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. God is infinite. Has no beginning, has no end. You know, sometimes people ask themselves, how can you try to explain somebody who has no beginning and has no end? When you yourself you remember your beginning, and everybody does, and people know that one day you shall surely end. How can you explain that which is infinite when you are limited to, fi to finite thoughts? I will say, if we could understand God, then he wouldn't be worth worshipping. Mm -hmm. if, if God was limited by the parameters that we are limited by, then he's not God. It's true. He's it's just true. me, and why would I worship me? Or look at it this way. Instead of saying that he's not God, the day that you'll be able to explain him, you become a God. <laughs> but it's true. We, we can't actually explain it. And it, it's a good thing, guys, today we are being joined by two guys who are in the x cans program. Mm. And the x cans you're talking about, Form 4, Levers 20, is it 20 or 2021? 20, 2021. 2021? 20, but yes. it's supposed to finish in 2020. Mm. So lit practically you are 2020 x cans Yes, but you finished in 2021. Finished 2021. Yes. A most reason to call you a special brand, a special team, right? Yeah. So um, we are with x cans who just finished their Form 4. And I think it is 
the best way to start this program by just telling ourselves and reminding ourselves that whatever has a beginning has an end. Mm. When did you guys join Form 1? I remember when I joined Form 1. Can I tell you the year? Why not? Yeah, tell us not to calculate how, to how old you are. Uh. Oh, that you can tell how old I am. I don't hide my age. It was in 2002. That was when I was born. It was in 2002. <laughs> and it was what? Why? That was when I was born. <laughs> no. Yeah. Can we cut? <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut. Don't cut. But, oh my goodness. Seriously. Yes. Ooh. I feel like, a, I, I feel very mammothy right now. Very mammothy. Like I'm about, but I know. No. I. You're born in 02. 202. You're born in 202. Yes. Ivan, you're Can we move order? on because yes. I'm getting depression on this bench? <laughs> what are we doing on the bench? <laughs> <Just can't> be <laughs> it's by it's by it's by on the bench, but hey, 202 is when I was a teenager. Is when I was actually ending into teenagehood, uh, just getting into form one. And I remember, I remember because I remember the first thing I wrote on the paper is, I can't wait for the day that I will sign the last date that I'm leaving high school. I still remember up to this date. But let's think about it. Everything that has a beginning must have an end. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at even your own journey in life. You had a beginning in 2002. Who? <laughs> in 2002. <laughs> Caro, I feel you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you right now. But indeed, um, Thinking about the whole walk of life, you can never put permanency on anything. As much as we want to put some things on premium, others we want to treat them as normal. At the end of the day, I think it's always important to remember that every single thing has an end. Mm -hmm. And this contributes or rather uh, is both towards the good things and the bad things the challenges, the challenging times, and the good times. Mm. So that we, you, you never get to a point of thinking that ni meteseka sana kuliko watu ingine, you know? Mm. Always remember that for us human beings, there's always a beginning and there's always an end. end. But for God, he is eternity. And the good thing about it is his faithfulness is in eternity. He will never lie. He will never back off from whatever he has promised. He will always follow his word to ensure that it becomes true, mm. a reality. Mm. And I think that's one thing every teenager out there who is listening today, you need to start on a sure foundation that God is not going anywhere. I know you have had many people in school telling you that this is the goalpost. By the time you're coming to score, unapata goalpost is ongeshwa. Not with God. What he says is what is. What is true, it will never become wrong. Just stick to what you know is true, and that is Jesus Christ. Who is the way, the truth, and the life? life. You are good Sunday school children. I can <laughs> see. I can see. All right, then. Um, tell us, what is the second question, Annette, that would like us to tackle today in respect to understanding why our God is eternal? Our second question is, when is the kingdom of God established in the world? Wow, mm. that's, that's a good one, actually. You see, first of all, God's kingdom is in heaven. Mm. And actually, um, Ivan will... Mm, Ivan, what a French-sounding name. Ivan. Mm. Oh, sorry. Now... <laughs> it's very French-like. <laughs> I get carried away with small, small things like this that make me happy. Mm -hmm. um, God's kingdom is already established in heaven. Mm. Ivan will cover more on that. But when you talk about when God's kingdom is established in the world... I think it's important to trace it back to the history of God's chosen people. Hallelujah. Mm. You look at the history of God's chosen people, I dare say the establishment of God's kingdom in the world began with Abraham. Abraham, a man who is described as a man who is faithful to God, surrounded by people who were serving pagan gods. And God established a covenant with him. The details are covered in Genesis 17. Fungo any 
Mm. You don't take my word for it. Read your Bibles. When God establishes his covenant with Abraham, he tells Abraham, I will make you a father of, not a nation, I will make you a father of nations. And I think that's a very important detail to remember because as we move along, we get to find out where the in nations comes in. So you follow the history of Abraham's descendants who are later known as the nation of Israel, nation, singular, and you find out that honestly, God has worked with this nation. They are, they are his chosen people. And looking at it even historically, how many times have people tried to eradicate Israel? How they, went, they went into slavery, and then they went into exile twice, and then they were scattered, and then the Roman Empire showed up, and then even as recently as Adolf Hitler, Ed, Adolf Hitler, don't tell me to say it again, <laughs> <laughs> trying to eradicate the Jews, and each time they bounce back. If that is not a reflection of God's, of the eternity of God's kingdom, I don't know what is. Yeah. And especially in light of what you are saying, that others have come and they have gone. Oh, yes. But for this particular one, it has been over. Mm -hmm. And so, Ivan, you can tell us now how Christ comes in. Yes. In another sense, we might argue that Jesus' kingdom dawns with onset of his public ministry. His baptism at the hands of John the Baptist declares him to be the son of whom God loves, that is King David. And yes, he was the suffering servant. Immediately after his temptation, he begins to preach in Galilee in fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah mm -hmm. chapter, I think it's around Isaiah chapter nine, yes. Mm -hmm to the effect that the light has dawned in Galilee of the Gentiles, Matthew chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. And it is in this context that Jesus preaches, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. That is Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. And to cap it all, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all not just any, but all. Yes, that is Psalms chapter 103, verse 19. Meskeyo, mm -hmm. repent. Repent. So that means that the kingdom of God, just as Ivana said, the kingdom of God did not start with the advent of Jesus' ministry in this world. It actually started as far as in the Old Testament, during the times of Abraham, at the moment of covenant making between him and God. That's when God started establishing his kingdom mm. and picked one particular nation, just repeating him for the sake of that one who went to pick his cup for, of tea <laughs> and missed. <laughs> Chai is important. Chai is very important, very crucial. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's actually important that it is not something that is just starting. And <laughs> there's somebody who asked one day, if you say God is love, who was he loving before we came? Before he created? Does it scratch your head much? It does. It does? Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you what it is? Hmm? Sure. Remember, God from the beginning, he has always existed in Trinity. He has always had love for God the Son. He has always had love for God the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is my son with whom I am well pleased in a testimony that he gave over his own son. Love has always flowed through the DNA of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that's why we should not have any difficulty when we say that God is love. And love is God. So do you have love to share? You are sharing God. I love that. I love the, the idea of, of bringing the, the eternity of God's love, that even before we showed up, he was already love. He was already love. And after all he said and done, he is. It's not God loves, it is God is mm. love. And you know when the world comes in the be into being, it goes ahead and tells us, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only 
begotten son begotten son if you not had said that I would have said beloved son <laughs> begotten son <laughs> who <laughs> gave his life for us right yes. so it has he has always existed in love to date mungu anakupenda we he loves you he it comes love comes second to nature it's closer to him than for him to hate it's easier for him to love than to him to release his wrath mm. on you. Love. All right. Can I have the next question? Um, that's the second part of question two. Mm-hmm. When is the kingdom of God established in your life? Hmm. When is the kingdom of God established in your life? Mm. You know, the interesting thing about God's kingdom is that you join it by invitation. Yeah. God doesn't conquer you. But and then says, you are now, you know, God is not a colonialist. <laughs> Let me say that. But <laughs> he does not come put a flag in your life and say, you are now kingdom. This is the British Empire. Yeah. Okay, sorry if you're British. We have a very painful history with you people. But we have forgiven. And we love you. <laughs> and we love you. But um, you join God's kingdom by invitation. Mm. So when is the kingdom of God established in your life? I dare say when you accept the invitation. And how's the invitation like? Is it like, um, I, I, I hear there are parties that are exclusively for invitation. Is it that kind of a, a party invitation? Is ah. it a general invitation? Uh, you've just made me think of one verse. Come to me all ye who are heavy laden and I shall mm. give you rest. Mm-hmm. So you want, if it's exclusive, it is exclusive for the one who is heavily laden. Yeah. Uh, we are all heavily laden, first of yes. all with sin. Of course. If you are a sinner, and you are, you are heavily laden. <laughs> you're making it sound as if they're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you're heavily pregnant. Yeah, you're pregnant with sin. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, um, yes, I, I like the question, um, is it exclusive? No. You see, God's invitation is, is open to all. John one twelve says, but as many as have received him. Mm. Not, but as many Israelites as have received him. Yeah. Not, but as many Africans as have mm. received him. It's, mm. but as many, full stop, as have received him. Mm. To them he gave the power to be called the children of God. Mm. You receive him, you become child of God. And even to those who believe in his name. And, you know, the idea of becoming, if God is a king and he has a kingdom and you're his child, what does that make you? It is not prince. a joy. Mm, I'm a prince. Yeah, you are Christ a says we are joint heirs. Mm-hmm. So who is the invitation open to? Everyone. Ivan, you have something for us there? Maybe before he uh, he, he comes, Absolutely. can I ask somebody to read for us uh, Revelations 3.20? I would also like to bring uh, something in there as well uh, concerning the invitation. It starts with something like, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. And if anybody hears my voice and opens the door, then I shall do what? Um, uh, those last words is what I really want. 320. Um, Revelations chapter 3 verse 20. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in, and he, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Yeah. If anyone opens the door, yes. I will come in. The only thing that you need to do? Open the door. Open it. Open. Open it. Just open. In Nigerian accent, open the door. Oh, open. It's open. Yeah, op- op- open. open. Whatever she door. has said. <laughs> Just open the door. It's, it's yours. You have the control. And he's knocking loudly every day, l- right now. Just open it. Let him in. Let him be the Lord over your life. Let him take control of that will. Do not be those people who are always demanding, I'm the one to drive this car. Let him drive your car. You'll be amazed at the places he will take you. You'll be amazed. Up to date, are you guys amazed that where God has taken you and where God is taking you? I yes. think my presence yeah. here. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. We share testimony right there. Thank you. Now, Ivan, you were supposed to say something. Yeah. Concerning the same? Concerning the same. Mm. Actually, she said it all. Oh, she said it all. Yes. Yes. Very well. Memory is a point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am it's so okay. sorry. <laughs> so we can, we can <laughs> move on to the the next question. Yeah. Um, the third question is, who is a kingdom seeker? Mm, I like that. Every time I hear that question, the first that comes to my mind is pilgrim. Eh? 
pilgrim's progress. Yani mzuri mimi nilikuwa nafikiria ile kanisa iko na kuru. Sikadi. Sinaitwa Kingdom Seekers. Ai ndio tunataka Kingdom Seekers. Oh that's a it's a church now. Yeah, a oh. big one, it's a very big church in Akuru. Kingdom oh. Seekers and then the owners the the ones who run uh Heaven's Gate Prayer Mountain in Gilgil. I have no idea where that it's is. It's a beautiful but I, place. It's a beautiful mm. place. Maybe one day we can, we can go and uh, do a recording there. It'd be mm. nice. Very well. So then uh who is a Kingdom Seeker? Ivan We ourselves, we are the kingdom seekers. Yes. We are supposed to seek God mm. and not vice versa, God to seek us. We are the ones who are supposed to avail ourselves, mm-hmm. ourselves to God. Mm-hmm. Yes, though we, there are the oldest tribulations in life mm. and one thing is that we tend to build our own kingdoms ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Yes, that sounds so much into the bible but then just to make it simpler i had to write this so that it comes out right Yeah. Not, not doing things that will make us will make God happy. We just want to be happy all of our ourselves. I like that. Yes, so that's where the selfish bit comes in. Comes in though yeah. we are generous and yes, we help people, but yeah. then uh what in the end of it all what are we doing to God? Yes, so the problem is and how does this come about? The problem is we create our own definitions or interpretation of righteousness we excuse ourselves for exaggerating the truth or not admitting our faults mm. we explain away the absolutes of god's word wow yes wow wow you know you, you heard me from the beginning um when you say that we actually create our own kingdoms and we we we, we try to run the show and and that's not what god wants of us and i also love the fact that you remind us that this kingdom we have to seek it right yes. we have to seek it but even so it doesn't mean that if you don't seek it god will not seek you out mm-hmm. because i was a sinner once and i was running away from god and god sought me yeah. you know when he says that uh, I, i will leave the 99 and come after the one that thing is so profound because at one point i was the one person who actually took the the, the lord jesus from the 99 that he can just come and pick me from that kadichia yeah, of getting lost so we we have our role to play sundays is an opportunity for us to draw close to god mm. it's also an opportunity for god to do to draw close to to us i'm amazed that have you ever thought the places that jesus has to go to come for you Ooh. Whatever he has to go through. If it's in a bushy area with thorny with thorny, you know, trees, he'll have to go through all that. If you are in Tim Fisi's club, he has to pass through an inner offices to get to you. What what is a group of offices called? Like a pack of offices. Yeah, it is a pack of hyenas. Mm. I think I thought that applies only for wolves or something. Most dog creatures are called packs dog creatures yeah mm. yeah i see that scavengers they don't have their own thing with vultures what are vultures called vultures are mingilia there's a video that went viral a few weeks back of <laughs> this 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 shepherd kakondoka uh, meanguka kwa mtaro and the shepherd really struggled to get it out and mm. finally i think you guys have seen that video i don't know I'll, I'll look for it and show it maybe one day. You come to physical service, I show you the video. Yeah. Um, pulls out the ship. The ship is very excited. Jumps, jumps, jumps on the third jump, back in the mtaro. <laughs> and the shepherd has to go get it out again. And you know, that that's us. <laughs> yeah, that's basically us. That's us. Because Christ will get you out of situations and you're like, thank you, Lord, I will never three weeks later. Now, look, um, I have mm. a thing. 
mm. I'm sorry, Lord. Mm. So, I mean, if I'm to sum up what he's just said, uh, a kingdom seeker, I, I, I could be had written a sentence here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> a kingdom seeker, I would say, is one who knows they are a broken sinner mm. who is in constant need of God's mercy wow. and grace. You brought the idea of the selfishness mm. because that's our pride. Our mm. pride doesn't let us acknowledge that we are sinners. So a kingdom seeker will be the broken sinner mm. who knows, eh, maze bila yesu, it's tricky. Mimi ni it's bure. very tricky. Mm. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, but I'll, I'll still ask, can we come up with maybe some examples of kingdoms that we have raised by ourselves as human beings? An example? As I was seated here, I thought of, you know, drawing your life as an alcoholic and starting this world of, you know, Giza Kingia, you're like Batman. It's like that signal comes Batman. up. <laughs> na kumulika to wherever you are. Hata kama uko ofisi. They are calling you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they are calling you. <laughs> you are needed. Eh? Come out and get get nocturnal or something. Th those are kingdoms. What about those who have also chosen to lie for a living? And still, those are their own kingdoms. They rule those worlds. World of darkness. But there's somebody who we know is the prince of all of all darkness. So you may think you are starting a kingdom, but there's there's another word I normally hear when somebody has something of contract to say. Ding ding ding. I think there's something better than that. But kuna ujumbe kwako unakucha. There is a prince of this world, the prince of darkness. You can't form a kingdom that is bigger than his. You can never overrule him. He will run and eventually even hell, he will actually run it. So if you think you are going to start your own kingdom by starting to drink, to smoke, at he becoming cool, at you are building your own kingdom, but it's all futile. It's all futile. Very well. We go to the next question. Somebody wants to contribute before we go to the next question. Annette, please. Um, our first question is, how then do we seek the kingdom of God? Nice. Yeah. I suspect Ivan, the way he's looking at that camera, he has something ah, to tell them. Wisdom. Wisdom is here with us. Eve, you know, like, uh, I have the answer. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, mm. And go with, um, we can seek uh, God's kingdom diligently and mm. wholeheartedly. A case in point, giving an example is um, when when people are exercising, when you go to the gym, mm. each and every day you wake up and go to the gym, you always look at, you find yourself, you, you'll just find yourself looking at the mirror if there's any progress every day from the start to the end. I can testify. Yes. Mm. You always mm. look and you say, yes, great. Mm. so that you can get fit. So with just the same way you're doing that is the same way you should go and mm -hmm. seek God. Mm -hmm. You should come to church, you pray, and you put your trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that is the more things in your life get better. Mm -hmm. Things always get better when you draw yourself closer to God. And by doing that, you should always this is song count your blessings mm. one by one yes ah. that one so you should keep check of the good things that are happening in your life yeah yes wow. and also yeah uh seeking god wholeheartedly this should be like a hundred percent give god a hundred percent yes but then i don't think it's good just to measure it in percentages of how, how good you're giving god but then give him a hundred percent because i think there is no way you can just wait for God mm. to give you all these blessings in your life, yeah. then you're not giving him anything. That's like doing it half-heartedly. That's right. Yes. Oh, man. Hey. This guy, this guy is something else. Wisdom. It's mm. wisdom. Wisdom it's Uzi. It's, it's, but it's true. It's like one of the characteristics of every gym is a mirror. Mm. Yeah? As in, there's no gym without a mirror. Okay, I've not gone to many gyms. Carol will tell you that I'm even struggling to go to one. Hmm. <laughs> <Surely>. <laughs> hmm. 
Mungu anakuona. But it's time caro, it's time. Yeah. Anyway, no, no excuse. I need to work out. People need to work out. And it's true. The word of God tells us very well that the word of God is the mirror in our life. We look at it and somebody who forgets the word of God is like a person who looked at themselves in the morning in the mirror and by the time they were leaving they had forgotten how they they look like. Right? So we do need to see ourselves and the more you look at yourself in the mirror the more you continue removing the you continue becoming flawless. The ladies will call it that, right? You continue yes. becoming flawless. Kuna wadingina kisasa? Kuna ingina? Kuna ingina kisasa? I think I think flawless. Okay. There's nothing it's your drip. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Let me let's start this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, there's a time we spend a whole two hours during lunchtime just discussing drip and luku. <laughs> but the more you look at the mirror, the more presentable you you feel and the more confident you feel. Right? I hear ladies and, and mirrors contributes to their to their confidence. For men, the last time I looked at a mirror Thank God I'm married. Before marriage, fia kio, kio, atas kuguzi, kuguzi, yeah, iliko kwa kuguzi. Nasi ya ni sababu na jiangalia, na na angalia na ni mnyanya na niyo apa tu kipiga story. Na jia, that's that's the only point of kuangalia na sindiyo. Yes. Eh, ana kipiga story kana na kuniyo. But the word of God, I hope you don't treat it that one. Especially for men, I love the fact that is Ivan who told, who, who said that indeed it is us who develop and create our own kingdoms for men they are the ones who are mostly uh, culpable of creating their own kingdoms because they don't want to be ruled by other people and i have heard even christians talk about how men are the last ones to want to you know give their lives to christ because that means submission and you know a man does not know how to submit submission <laughs> is Submission, you have to submit. Every one of us has to submit because at the end of the day, we are the bride of, we are the bride to the groom who is Christ. We are the bride. Did I just say bride? We are the bride. Mm, I'll say again. We are the bride mm -hmm, again. to the groom. The poo? The bride. <laughs> <laughs> the bride to the groom who is Jesus. And so we have to be presentable. We have to be ready for him. And that should help us a lot. Uh, and for men, there is no there is no shame in saying that you are actually saved. Me, I can say it day and night. And not because I have a call. And as I talk a and say, there's, there's a scripture as you are coming on board. I, I, I learned uh, recently. I'm going to remember it and then I'm going to tell you it is in First Peter. While you share, finish up on what uh, Ivan has just said. Anybody would like to change here? I, another thing. Mm -hmm. Um, on how do we seek the kingdom of God is through joining ministries in church and working working in the church, you know, like Kara and Rev here. Um, I think you, you get gl closer to God when you get to work in the church and also pull other people, friends, and yeah, I'm also encouraging you to join more ministries in the church, the teens one, yeah. From a prison Which worship. Uh, mm, from a prison she's on worship. the prison worship mm, team, guys. Mm, mm. She knows what she's talking about. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. It is very crucial. Um, you know, maybe I've never told you this, Carol, by the way. Did you know before I started ministry, even when I was still hanging out with the wrong crowd in the in the neighborhood, do you know that every Sunday I would actually run home to go and teach Sunday school? I know. I know for some reason I knew deep within myself I'm not good with my father. If he comes right now, I am I am done. But I could not fail every Sunday to just run back home so that I can teach my Sunday school. Not because I was getting any kind of allowance. There was no allowance. You just teach because there's something that touches your heart every time you do. And you do it long enough and who knows? You become a permanent worker in the house of God. Hallelujah. And here we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, so serve in the house of God. Find something to do. Better is one day in the house of God than a thousand days elsewhere, David will say. He would rather eat from, you know, eat the morsels that fall off the table of, of God 
as opposed to go out there and indulge in the riches of the world. That morsel in the kingdom of God, whoo, that morsel is satisfying. It's satisfying. It is eternal, just the way as God is eternal. Yeah. So maybe we can share our last words of um, winding up. We do have a question. We do have another oh, yeah, yeah, question. Have the Look last at me one. Running. Um, that's question five. What exactly does it mean to have no end? What exactly? Does it mean to have no end? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kari, you want to take this one? I think Ivan will go first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I do go, I go first. Yes. Okay, Ivan, I've clustered him. Sorry. Uh, so, Mona uh, Karatasiangu. Anyway, <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like us to look at this from a human standpoint. Um, when you go through history, there's some th th the, the, the word, if you're to replace the word kingdom with empire, there's been so many empires, so many kingdoms that have been established throughout history, right all the way from ancient Egypt, because we know that the pyramids of Egypt were built during a very predominant Egyptian kingdom time. Does that make sense? The English, you don't understand, but you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And you look at some of the greatest kingdoms in history, from that very Egyptian one, which was later crushed by the Roman Empire, um, centuries later, actually. We have the Persian Kingdom, the ones that took Israel to Babylon, not once, but twice. That, that was the Persian Kingdom. It was destroyed, it was defeated, I believe, by the Macedonian Kingdom under a man that we still th speak of to date, Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. we all, we've all heard of Alexander the Great. So th he was an emperor. And interestingly enough, great as he was, his kingdom ended when the Macedonian kingdom came up. And even that kingdom ended when the Roman Empire came up. And even the Roman Empire collapsed under its own weight. So if you're going to look at the idea of God's kingdom having no end, we have to first realize that it's not the only kingdom to have existed. But the eternal nature of God's kingdom is what makes it different. There are, and you realize kingdoms are built, I had said at the beginning, kingdoms are built by conquest. Conquest means I bring my army, I dominate everyone there, and I take you under me as a ruler. If you go through the story of how the Israelites ended up in Babylon, that's exactly what happened. The cities were destroyed, the walls of Jerusalem were razed down, and the people were taken into exile. That's how kingdoms are built. That's how conquering happens. And yet, what happens is for the kingdom to end, it's because another kingdom shows up mm. that is stronger, that is more fastidious than this one, and crushes it. And sometimes the kingdom ends because the very people that are being dominated rise up in rebellion. The more recent empires, the European country empires, that's how they ended. When you look at the story of colonialism, it was a story of, 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 con of <laughs> conquest. Mm. And yet the very people that they were conquering, in Af let's speak Africa as a continent, we all rebelled. We were like, no, we don't want to live under your rule anymore. Mm. And so the British Empire, psh, gone. French Empire, psh, gone. But now you look at the kingdom of God has no end. And you realize that it's very different because its establishment is special and even the nature of how it runs is different. Ivan, uh, oh, sorry, I don't know why I'd forgotten your name. You can add a bit to that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just looking at the nature. I, I said at the beginning, you guys, um, the, the nation of Israel, attempts have been made at destroying it. It's never been done. To date, it's never been done. Why? Just a reflection of just God's kingdom and the eternity of it. And God is eternal. Levan started us off there. God is beyond space, time, and matter. So what makes you think that an eternal king can have a, a finite kingdom? An infinite king cannot mm. have a, a finite kingdom. Hey, English, English. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is deep. That is deep. And I think that's a good way to also end just from the beginning that indeed our God is infinite. 
and his kingdom is infinite. It will never end. And if you want also to enjoy infinity in terms of your life, just form partnership with him. He will help you to rise to the levels of living in eternity. Living. That's the, uh, the word here. Living. Because there's also the gnashing of your teeth mm. in pain. In eternity. But if you want to live with Christ forever, just make up your mind now and accept this invitation to this bash because it's a real bash, man. Yeah? It's gold stuff. We are talking about streets of gold and everybody lives in those streets. of gold and everybody lives in those streets. Others living in uh, concrete roads, others living in, you know, all weather roads. No. We are all living in gold. Pla is it plated? I mean, it is gold. Paved. Gold paved, paved not coated. Yeah, is a gold coated, sana. <laughs> paved. Because in God, there is no scarcity. All right? So I want to urge all of you who are listening to us today. We have discussed the kingdom of God having no end. You to try not to bring to an end your own relationship with this God who is eternal. That's the only way you can be invited into this party. Be part of this uh, 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 great team that will be celebrating with the Lord one day. And I believe it's something worth waiting for. Beautiful. Any other person who has the last thing to say before we pray? Maybe notices, Carol? Oh, yes. Um, so again, as you can see, it's teens on the bench. Yeah. Teens. Thank you, Ivan. I Thank speed. you. Why is the name disappearing again? Annette. Yeah. Annette, yes, Annette. I knew there was an N. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And so Sorry. moving forward, guys, you want to be on this bench? You know where our offices are. You can come physically. Yeah, I'll text But us. also reach us on social media, reach us via email addresses. Just reach us and tell us, you know, I really want to be on the bench. When you see me in church, stop me and say, Carol, what do I need to do to be on the bench? I'll tell mm. you when to come. Mm. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Tins on the bench is as open as God's kingdom. Come as you are. <laughs> it's an invitation. Open. Mm. It is an invitation. It's not an exclusive. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that would be my first notice. Uh, the second thing I would announce to you guys is uh, for those uh, who are joining ROPS, mm. ROPS began last Sunday, but yeah. you can still join us. It's not too late. It's not. It's mm. Again, kingdom of God, there's plenty of time. Anyway, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> let me stop insisting. But uh, ROPS sessions are ongoing every Sunday. Mm -hmm. We meet in the teens hall That's right. to go through the liturgy and praise and worship. So those who are ROPS age, that's age 13, 14. Mm. When you're when I work on class 8, say, there are some class 7s who some want to come. Yeah. Basically, we're looking at age 13, 14. Mm. Even 12 is fine. Mm. Join us for ropes. It's an amazing, amazing time. It's going to be an amazing year for you, even mm. as we plan to usher you into Teens Church. True. Uh, Xcans, as you can see. Tushanza maneno. Tushanza. And we are shining. What are you doing in the house? Mm. Get Atakama. out. Atakama liza liwe lisi kunye sisi tulikuanga tunamaliza. Let's not go there away. Mm. But Xcans, uh, classes are going on every Wednesday. That's right. From, please note the time, 2 mm -hmm. to 4. Yeah. The classes are physical. Uh -huh. I cannot emphasize this enough. We are not doing virtual classes for ex -cans. Yeah. And please show up kuna camp. Yeah, there is a camp, man. Ooh. Yeah. And of yeah. course the lessons. The lessons are also Oh yeah, very the lessons are important too. <laughs> very bougie by But the yes, way. please. <laughs> uh, we need to we need the ex -cans to um come and yeah. join us. Yeah. I don't know if I have left any other notice. Rev will tell you about the giving part. Yes. Giving is part of our worship. We have been before the Lord, please. Remember, not all of us are coming to the house of God. Some of us are still quarantined at home. Uh, they're still coming slowly, slowly. Uh, please remember to give your offertory through 30, 30, 36. That's for your offertory. If you're giving towards the CTC, our next to be very soon home, uh, you give to 30, 30, 35, and may the Lord bless you for your continued giving. Remember, it is God who gives us strength so that we can go out and look and mm. get work 
and get something that we can bring back to him later. Usimnyime. Usikue mchoyo. Patia mungu yake. Mm. Santini sana for joining us. Perhaps we can now have the lovely Annette. Mm, ex can't I can introduce I tell you. you. Yeah, no, let me sorry, I don't mean to sell you. Before ni baptize up a Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Give them your name every time. Keep on mentioning your name. Anaza kubaptize ki mchezo mchezo. <laughs> but we can have Annette please uh, conclude for us yeah. a prayer. Um, let's pray. Lord, you come before you this time. We thanks giving our hearts, oh Lord. We thank you for everything that you have granted unto us, Lord. We thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord. We thank you for good health. We acknowledge you in our lives, Lord, and all the sins that we may have committed, knowingly or unknowingly, Lord. You're going to forgive us of all our transgressions, oh Lord. Lord, I thank you for everything, the gift of family, the gift of friends, even the gift of us being here, Jehovah. We just want to thank you for everything, Lord. And uh, the sick in hospital, stretch a healing hand upon them. See unto them and their families, oh Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord. This corona, Lord, you know that, Lord, we are tired of wearing masks, Jehovah. But, Lord, you're going to see us through. And you're going to get this to an end, oh Lord. And what I've not prayed for, may the Holy Spirit intercede and intervene. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. 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 And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face turn towards you. And may he give you peace and hope for tomorrow. Those who got their placements and they're not happy, worry not. There is nowhere where God cannot work with you. Mm. Wherever you've been called, just go, settle, and just expect God to walk with you from there and make you from whatever they're thinking you are not to something. Oh, there are some of us that are going to be able to do it. Who? Ha! Hashtag, hashtag. Hashtag. One day, my daughter and my son, I hope you are going to say, hashtag. All right, guys. God bless you. See you next week. Uh, we shall be doing another aspect of the kingdom. See you. And come to church. <laughs>